Hi everyone, good afternoon. My name is Liam McBride, I'm a project manager at Brand Fuel, and this is Simona Orlack and she is working with us as an intern at the moment and very kindly uh, decided to help us out today. So she's been tirelessly working, uh, we've been looking at tons and tons of different event apps that are out there on the market um, and we've na managed to narrow it down to 10. And we're going to look at different categories. So as we know, over the last couple of years, um, apps have been a really integral part of everyone's lives, um, from using Facebook to G Plus to Maps. Everything's got an app now. Um, they, they bring condensed information to your fingertips. They're available 24-7. Um, and almost everyone has them on some sort of platform, whether it be your mobile phone or your iPad or your Android. Um, so these, they help us connect with brands um, and they create more of a memorable experience, which is great for, for any kinds of events. So um, let's just ask a question, first of all. Uh, everyone get your iPads at the ready. How many people here have actually used an event app, please? <laughs> Vote on your iPad <laughs> and we'll get the, get the answer up. Okay. Oh, great. Okay. So actually, almost half the people here have used them, which is excellent. Maybe you will have used some of the ones that we're going we're gonna to go over. So just as a quick summary, um, things that they help with initially, they can act as a single event management platform. So you can pump information into them. They can work for registration, networking, and also social media. Uh, you can brand them. So. Uh, the whole thing is branded up to your company that can be used before, during, and after the event. So the event maybe moves from just a one-day event or a three-day event to come over the year. Anyone can download the app at any time. Uh, so that's great for getting your brand out there. They're in real time. I know that Tim and David actually um, touched on some of this. So they're in real time. You can update them whenever you want. It completely eliminates the need for handouts and paper. It, it's much more green. So we're not producing you know, 75,000 leaflets of 10 pages. You can get that all in an app, and everyone can just look at it as they choose. Um, it's really compact. It's, it's cost efficient as well, because you're not having to produce all those different paper items. Um, it can also act as a profit center if you get your partners and sponsors involved, so they can add their own uh, advertising banners. You, we can also do push notifications. Um, so these are just some of the different elements that are really great for events. Um, you can also track things on the back-end metrics, so you can see what different parts of the apps people have used the most, um, what different things that they've engaged in, if they've been um, actively going together, talking to each other through the app. So you can see all that at the back-end of these, which is great. So I'm going to pass over to Simona. She was going to so When doing this research for Brand Fuel, we broke down the categories into five different areas, which you can see above me. We broke them down into complete solution apps, registration apps, guest list apps, networking and social, and then media and fun to finish with. So just to start off, the complete solution apps, there's a numerous amount of companies out there that do this. Um, they offer a variety of services. It can be anything from sort of pre-event marketing and ticket sales right through to post-event analysis and surveys. So you can see a real like um, sort of analysis of where your uh, attendees came from and what they sort of did. So first up. Okay. So the first app we looked at is Snap App, which is by Quick Mobile. We think this is one of the best ones for the multi-events. Uh, it's a multi-usage one, so after you've used it for one event and it's all branded up, you can reuse it again year on year or for different events if you choose to do that. Uh, it's in real time, this, so it shows real time data all throughout your event, um, and customers can use it as, ca as can um, event planners. So you can use it the whole time, before, after, as I said a minute ago. This one's also very, very secure, and it's uh, got a great level of security. Dell, Virgin, Microsoft, Hilton, and MPI have all used this one in the past, so it just shows you the kind of big world players who are using this one at the moment. Next one. This is a Smart Connect app by Genie. Um, I picked this one because of the number of great features and the variety of features that it has. Um, so depending on the size of event that you have or the desired results that the organizer may have, they can pick this one for the number of features. So the first one that was brilliant was the custom branding for this one. So organizers can put their logos up, their colors up, and really sort of customize the app to how you want it to look. Especially for post-event, it's great for um, keeping the buzz going for your brand and for your company. 
It also lets you showcase the lead sponsor or multiple sponsors, which can be used as an extra revenue stream for you guys. Those of you who are interested in making more money, I'm sure loads of you are. And then um, for people who have very large scale events that happen throughout the world, you can impress your clients by having a multilingual feature. So you can showcase the app in their native language. Um, you can also have interactive maps. So, for example, if you had a conference, your delegate, delegate can input a certain room in the conference center and it will direct them around the conference center. And last but not least, the gamification feature is brilliant. I know most of us nowadays play on our phones, on our games, sitting on the train home. So this one's a great one for harnessing human nature in the sense of creating a buzz in the conference room and getting everyone to sort of interact with one another. Okay, thank you. Uh, so the next category we looked at is registration. So these apps are just purely for registration needs. So for this one, it was the tools and management, which uh, were brilliant because they save organizers a lot of manual time-consuming work. Um, the program sort of allows organizers to spend more time looking after their attendees, focusing on them, giving the personal touch. So you're no longer faffing around with pieces of paper, we're, uh, wondering who's arriving and who's not. And we're going to talk, to talk through two of these, which are Reg Online and Eventbrite, which you guys heard about earlier. But a few of the other ones in the industry that are great at the moment are Amiando and Resgo. Okay. So the first one is Reg Online, and this is one that is done by Active. Uh, this one works well, we think, for large events due to the unlimited user and account access. Uh, it also has custom reporting, so organizers can see who signed up and when. They can see who's arrived at the event, where they are. As we said, unlimited users, so you can have as many people as you want on iPads or Androids or any system signing people in, and as many people can sign in as they want. Uh, this one's also a pay per participant. So it's a completely clear costing, where some of them you, it's a, you have to pay depending on the different packages you get. This one's literally, if you've got one participant, it's £2.95 or $2.95. Um, and included in that, you get a mobile site and you get an app included. So it's not price packaged and not dependent on that. Okay, next one. And the next one is Eventbrite, which you guys heard about this morning. They're absolutely brilliant for registration, and they're one of our clients at the moment. Um, it's very, very simple and easy to set up an online page with them. You just um, use their tools to upload your URL, your logos, your images, and you can completely brand it to your organization pretty quickly. It's accessible anywhere because it's both online and mobile. So it's very, very quick for your registrants to apply, buy their tickets. And there's a number of platforms where they can pay. So they can pay by credit card, by PayPal, by Google. So there's a lot of options out there to help your registrants to make a smooth and easy process. Um, and Eventbrite's always free for free events. Everyone likes a free event. Okay, so the next one we are going to look at is guest list apps. Um, guest list apps, I found when I was doing the research that a lot of them tie in automatically with the registration apps. So, for example, Eventbrite do both the registration and the guest list. I've tried to separate it as much as we could, so it's just a great way for um, organizers to create lists from the data that the registration and the um, sort of purchase tickets provides, so you no longer need to stand at the entrance with a clipboard, that sort of old hat. We're trying to make it more professional, more clean, and a much quicker process. So the first one we're looking at is Attendium, which is one that um, we've actually used at Brandfuel quite a few times. So this one is very simple and easy to use. You pull up the website, and you can you just simply format a couple of different things on an Excel page, and then you upload it quite quickly. As soon as you open up your app, once you've registered, that comes out. Again, you can use it on as many different um, devices as you want. It's, we've used it in smaller events, so kind of 250 people. It works really well. We've had four hostesses all registering people all at the same time. It gives you a running tally of how many people are there, and you can look into the back of it to see who's not there, who is there. So it's just it's a really, really quick and easy process, this one. They also have a 30-day free trial, so this is a great one if someone wants to go back to your office. I was going to say go home, but you don't want to do that when you're home. Go back to your office and um, download this one. You can have a bit of a play with it and you can see how easy it is to use. And this is, you know, it's not a full system, but it's just really nice to have there at the front of, this, of the event so that you're just registering people and as um, Simona said, just much cleaner to use. So that's a, that's a great one that we like. And then the other one in this section is Check-in Easy. I've had a muck around with this one myself. It's very, very easy to use. It's pretty much as simple as uploading your Excel file with all your guest names on. Um, 
Check in Easy also gives you 50 free guests. After that, there is a cost. So for the first package, it's around 400 people, and that one's just under 65 pounds. So it's quite cheap if you wanted to have sort of not a complete solution app, but wanted to try something small for a small event. It's a great one to try. Um, they use a boarding pass technology as well, so that you can um, email people QR codes, and then they can use those to scan them in on the day rather than checking in by uh, checking in manually. You can also add guests on the door, so it's very, very quick and easy. And guests can be um, notified by bulk text messages to say that the conference will be starting in the next five minutes in the Matcham Center, for example. So they would all then be able to um, get updates throughout the day. And um, you can also get push notifications push notifications, sorry, as an organizer, to tell you that special guests have arrived. So if a VIP guest has arrived at the front door, you can race over there, give them that personal touch that David was talking about earlier. Um, yeah, Okay. on to you. So the ne next ones we're going to talk about are the ones that we think have got uh, the best features for networking and social activity. So today, I'd say, was a pretty crucial time to be networking. Um, it helps sort of for participation and interaction purposes. So it's a great way to get your attendees involved. You can gain an insight, it, insight into what they're interested to. Um, and it's a great way for you matching your guests with people with similar tastes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so the first one we're going to look at is uh, Double Dutch. This one is actually a complete package, just so you know, but we just wanted to point out these, these key features because their in-app networking is really good in this app. It's great for activity feeds. Um, it's an integration of attendees, so people can speak to each other through the app. There's discussion feeds, which everyone can contribute to, um, and they can also connect through their social sites through this one as well, so they can connect on Facebook um, or Twitter or G+. Uh, it's in real time, again, so you can see where people are hanging out. If you want to go and find someone, you can connect with them. You can see that they're in the coffee shop around the corner, and you can wander over there and have a chat with them. So it's great for really interacting with everyone, even if it's speakers or attendees. Um, and con as I say, contacting each other is really, really easy and messaging each other. So we think that's a great one. Um, it helps, helps everyone discover different interests and see what's trending throughout the event as well. And the next app was Spot Me. This is also a complete solution app like um, Double Dutch. But this one we picked in the uh, networking and social section because it's really, really great for encouraging interaction with your attendees. And um, it also provides instant feedback from your guests because there's a lot of interaction. So you're gaining an, uh, gaining an interest in their insights. There were three main features that I picked out for this one that really, really worked for the networking side of things. There was a feature called matchmaking. And this is where they um, match your part participants by different criteria. Um, and they also suggest meetings. So something can pop up on your phone. It'll say, so-and-so is next to you. Would you like to have a chat with them? It's a great way for pe people to be notified. So it takes the sort of awkwardness out of trying to meet someone and work out who's who and feel embarrassed about going up to anybody. It sort of takes the edge off of that. One of their other ones is networking contest. This is where you're challenged as a group of attendees to exchange as many business cards as you can in a certain period of time. Again, taking the edge off of trying to exchange a business card with somebody. Um, and you can also make it more fun by getting them to do it from different countries. So how many people can exchange a business card from a different person from a different country, and again, in a certain time period. And last one was Connections Wall, which is where all your attendee photos would be up on the board behind you. And each time a business card was exchanged, there'd be a link from one photo to the other, and then um, that would obviously increase throughout the day. Um, the great thing about SpotMe as well is that they actually loan out um, iPads and iPod Touches for those of you who don't have a device with you on the day. And they've just developed a chargeable case, so you no longer need to have your wires attached anywhere. It will, the iPad would sit in a chargeable case, and you can carry it around everywhere. Great. Uh, so the last one we've looked at is media and a bit of fun for your event to encourage everyone to interact. Um, for this one, it was a way of getting attendees to sort of compete for points. So a lot of the in-app networking that L Leah was talking about earlier, it's a way to get the conference room buzzing, get people engaged, get people interacted with e one another. And also this whole social media side of things, it's a way that attendees can upload photos and they're spreading your, the word of your company for you on your behalf, which is a great way of marketing your company. Okay, so uh, the first one is Sherry Pick, and this is one that you can actually download now if you want. It's www.sherrypick.com, 
um, and you, if you look for Live Tech 2013. So on this one, what you can do is uh, create a collaborative album for your event, and you can just, so anyone sitting here, take a picture of myself and Simona and upload it immediately. You can either have this as a, as a private event page where only people at the event can see it, or if you're organizing the event, you can have it as open. So if you're sitting at an event, you take a picture and you upload it, you can tell your colleagues, oh, go and have a look at this app. You should see the event I'm at. It's great. This is happening. This is happening. So it's a really nice way to include everyone that is maybe not at the event. And it's, another, it's a great way to get the name of the company out there. Because if you go onto it, you'll see the map. And you can click into all, ever, all the ones that are open. You can click in and see the different events. So that's, that's a really nice one. It's great for discovering different events around the world and seeing what other things are out there. Um, so yeah, we like that one. It's a lot of fun. And then Mobile Roadie. This one's another complete solution app like the first ones we were talking about. Um, it's actually heavily used in the music industry rather than the um, events industry in this side of conferencing and etc. But we picked this one out for this section because it encourages competition and social media presence, so it's great for that one. Um, they have a customizable rewards feature, sort of the in-app networking where you can earn points and gain your place uh, on the gain your spot on the top of the leaderboard. Um, it's a great way to provide incentives for your guests. So for those who stay to the end of the day, if they get to the top of the leaderboard, they could be possibly provided a ticket for the next year's event. That way you're promoting your event at that event for the next year. Um, it's great also for p uh, creating polls and promo ops, a promo pop-up, sorry, so you can um, market your brand and gain an insight into your users as well. Um, all Social feeds are also automatically linked when you create the site, so you know who's sharing what, where they're sharing it, and people's check-ins. So it's a very good app to use as well. Okay. So that's us. That's the top ten, the ones that we think are, are out there at the moment that are going to really work for different events, whether it be a full-scale one to encompass everything, or just certain different little elements that you might want to improve your event on. Um, and you know. Producing events, we want to deliver memorable and engaging experiences, and using this technology and different apps really helps us do that. So thank you very much, and let's see if you've got any questions. Thank you. Simona. Uh, Simona, don't wander <laughs> off just yet. Uh, first of all, I want to show you this. This is a really useful session. It's a shame it's so quick. Presenters are doing a great job. OK? Thank you. So nervous beforehand. So nervous. So well done. Well done. Um, can this presentation be available after today? Great info, too much to try and write down. Sure, no Yours problem. We can, we can share that with you, no problem. How? If you, come and see me and I'll give you my card. Okay. There you are, easy done. And would you recommend an internet or native app? Native app. Every time? Most times, just because it will be on your mobile phone, so it would be a lot easier to be on the go while you're using it. Yep. If it's an online app, most of the time, the layout of it on a mobile phone isn't it as changes. clear as it is when it's on a web. Yeah. So. Okay, so, so you've got control. You'd, you'd say native every time? Most times, yes. Okay. Um, right, brilliant. Oh, hold on. I think there's another one there. <laughs> okay, I won't read that one out, because that's, that's pushing for a job. Um, <laughs> Okay, uh, that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you very okay, much. Thanks, thanks everyone. Thank, you. Thank you. Any questions, come and, come and let us know. We'll be here. <laughs> okay. Um, I have actually got uh, a couple more questions which refer back to um, John's, uh, where are you, John? John. Uh, John's uh, uh, presentation, the last presentation. So if you could take that. Oh, you can come up and join me if you'd like, you know, if you're feeling cosy. Um, this is happening too often. Uh, Putting, uh, talking about putting posting, sorry, apologies for not getting this one in earlier, but we thought we were having trouble with the timings. Um, putting posts about events yeah, up on Facebook or Twitter uh, on the personal file rather than corporate site, is that acceptable? Yes, I think, I think if you, um, you post them with slightly different emphasis, and I think the most thing is transparency. So if you're putting up on your personal site, um, don't try and put it across as if you're... Uh, a delegate or a, a, a pundit, uh, you, you actually want to put yourself over, I work for this company, it's on my site, my personal site, I am promoting my company's event through my personal site. So what you don't want to do is, is, is give any impression that you're not being totally transparent. That would be my own recommendation. Okay, uh, we talked about negative feedback and uh, Facebook's, you know, reading of everything. And to, what about those, um, you know, the uh, what's he termed here? The, the, those slang words that juxtapose, so wicked and, and, and sick. 
man. <laughs> what about those? I didn't realise you were so down with the kids. Check it, blood. Yeah. Okay. In um, it. There is quite often those those uses of terminology will actually be calculated as neutral in Facebook, simply cause, because actually they're more commonly used in that sense, i.e. a positive framework than that nowadays than they would be used in a negative work. So it's not, it's not really those kind of phrases that cause more problems. Um, it's sometimes um, just people's bad English that often uh, creates negative feedback. Uh, spelling. SPC me after. Yeah, like that. absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Um, your uh, presentation earlier, is it available in PDF form anywhere? Um, I don't know. I haven't spoken to, the, uh, to Will and Peter about this, but what we normally do is we'll put them into PDF uh, and then we'll give you an opportunity to, to either download them or, or we'll, we can send them to you. Um, I'll probably have a chat with Will and we'll see what we, what we can do so we, you actually will have access to, to probably all of the presentations at some point. So uh, that shouldn't be a problem. Okay. Um, but if anybody specifically wants a, a PDF of, of, of my work, um, <laughs> if, you come, if, you, if, you, uh, if you grab me after, I'll bung you a card and, and we can always do something direct. Excellent. Um, and I can't believe the answer to this will be no because you're a social media man. Have you got a Twitter account? I do. Is that it? Is that it? You're not going to give me any more. Um, oh, okay. Got, Don't no, keep no, it to no, yourself. No, okay. no, no. no. I'll, I'll, I'll be honest. I've got a, I'm, I am Mellow Johnny for some strange reason. Um, I've got a bit of a view about, about so, so being a social media person and doing social media. Um, an awful lot of people in my industry uh, spend all their time telling people about social media. Um, and actually, most of my customers um, don't want to have all the high-end detail about social media. They actually want the help to do it themselves. So I, I tend to keep quite quiet on social media, not because I don't believe in it. It's just, it's just not the way I, I do, do my stuff. I'm, it's not about, uh, so we say, flooding you with the latest data on social media. There's plenty of people doing that. Okay. But if you want to find me, I'm, 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 I'm Mello Johnny. Mello Johnny. And thank you very much for not calling yourself a social media guru. That would have been awful. Uh, thank you very much, John Ross. <laughs> right. Uh, it's time for a summary of the day, I think, isn't it? Yes, I think it is. It's time for a summary of the day from uh, a man we saw very early on, um, Mr. David Ball. If you'd like to come back up and uh, summarise for us. Well, uh, that was a very exciting finish to the, to the day. I'm constantly in awe of how amazing the younger generation is um, to have an intern come up and, and get on stage and deliver that amount of content. Um, it thoroughly researched was quite amazing. I think she deserves another round of applause. And, and I hope you'll agree with me that, uh, not that I had anything to do with it, because I didn't, that today has been fantastically well organised. Um, and uh, there is another new person, uh, not new, but another person who is um, heading out into the stream of producing for the first time today. So we have a, another young person from the company who's produced the whole day. Jamie, well done. It's been an interesting day. Um, we've learnt from Lisa uh, the importance of understanding the brief uh, and, and actually being able to do that before leaping into choosing a registration system. Uh, and Anton, the importance of freeing up time to be able to spend more time on the processes involved and getting involved with people in a personal way. Marion, I thought, was... Uh, uh, came out with a couple of real crackers, uh, one of which was this idea of keeping the box office open past hours because of having mobile valid content uh, past the end of the day. And uh, her stats on selling tickets through Facebook I thought were fascinating. One ticket for each three and a half shares on Facebook. Fascinating stuff. Carsten showed the ease of building mobile apps and, uh, and the breadth of, the, of what his platform uh, can offer. Yalchin, going bespoke for larger events with 90% uh, of the 
kit already being built and therefore the personalization bit being relatively small. A uh, fascinating presentation from Jez on that DVP, which was a new one on me, uh, and about innovating to add delegate value. And the six C's, we have a process called the six I's. He has the six C's. It concentrate, context, contribute, collaborate, connect, and cascade. And about content reaching people outside of the event. <clears throat> and, and Robert, a really fascinating presentation again on the, the bits I love. The economy of one. Um, brands with a perfect, uh, sorry, brands with a purpose, not profit, I thought was really good. And trust never sleeps. And how one event, uh, London Fashion Week, 34,000 people generated an amazing one and a half million tweets. That's really quite something. And also that brands measure, that measure events grow more, uh, which was a really interesting insight. John, um, well, we heard so much from John today, and I think it is worth downloading his presentations, if possible. Uh, the need to understand your audience's digital ecosystem. That social is about customer experience. We learned a lot about Facebook, and particularly I learned a lot today about Edge Rank, which I didn't know much about. And Tim, you know, using tech to personalize and to amplify the experience and using lovely bits of technology as ice-breaking tools. I hope that you all go and make your personal, ha your personal bags because uh, for you, your friends, or I think there's a couple of dogs are going to be on one fairly soon. Um, be great fun. Uh, not quite last, Leah and Simona, I thought, did a really thorough job um, on those top ten apps. I know that they both worked very hard over a long period of time to make sure that they're really inclusive in all of their research. I hope that you've really enjoyed today. Uh, I know I have, and I'm going to pass over to Will. Thank you. Thank you, David. Not sure which one I'm using. This one's nice and warm, though, so I'll go with this. So, um, just firstly, I suspect... Um, John is at Mellow Johnny because some other buggers got at Jonathan Ross, but anyway, potentially. Um, okay, so I just wanted to get one little bit in, actually, before, before I, I thank the people that have made this happen. Um, and that is, of course, the purpose behind Live Tech and the reason we came up with the idea a couple of years ago is because um, LondonLaunch.com has been around a long time, nearly 12 years now. I was, I was clearly about 16 when I started the business. And um, it's, um, it, it, things have changed enormously since, since we set it up. So we've had a radical overhaul, and about two or three months ago, we launched a, what we think is a revolutionary new version of the site after years and, well, years and years of experience, but, a, but a certainly a solid year of research. And there are people in this room um, who, who contributed to a lot of research we did as to what people were looking for in a website to help them plan their events. And we've got a lot more engaging, a lot more interactive, a lot more intuitive, a lot more user-generated, which is absolutely crucial, of course. So we've majored on all the review sides, we've packed in loads of new features, um, and we think it flows a lot better, and the feedback we've had is fantastic. And we've got plans for phase two and phase three, and rolling it out all over the world, and all sorts of exciting things. But I just wanted to touch on one absolutely fundamental, but really, really key feature, um, which I'm not sure. F first of all, can I just have a show of hands? Has, has anyone seen or noticed that we've got a completely different version of London Launch? Someone has. Great. I, th I think most of you sort of should have done because that you had to sort of go there to register. But one of the features that's on there, and one of many, is that you can now use it to not only plan your event, but you can have multiple event lists and plans. So the idea is you can browse the site. We've got a lot more editorial, not editorial in terms of industry news, because we leave those to the that to the experts, event magazine and conference news, both of whom I think are here, so I, I won't um, you know, claim that we do anything like that. But what we do have is this major new Be Inspired section, which is all about the latest trends, ideas, people can put, upload them themselves. So it's very user-generated, very sort of Huffington Post style in terms of um, what's going on out there in the industry. And you can browse the site, even if you haven't got a specific event on that day, and you can collect ideas. You can say, oh, I like that idea. Um, I like that story. I think that venue's cool. That might be good for my Christmas party. That might be good for my AGM. That might be good for my product launch. And you can have multiple event lists and plans. You can store that information in your own personalized profile. And then you can forget about it. But when you next log on, 
if anyone's reviewed a particular venue or if anyone has made a comment or there's been a new offer or a package or a news story, you'll get an alert to say, oh, you're interested in Sunbeam Studios, because I can see Roxy over there. Um, so, so you're interested in that venue. Did you know that there have been three more reviews, uh, they've got a Christmas party offer, and they've got this new bit of news? So it keeps you completely in the loop and alert of what's going on, and you can literally have all your different events in there, um, and you can even just save ideas in those lists as well. You can get updates on those. So that's, that's a key part of what we're doing, and live tech fits in because it's all technology-based. It's all, it's all um, fully mobile, our, our new site. Um, there is a live social media feed, so you can be interested in a venue or supplier, and you can choose to follow them there and then. Um, so there's a lot of, lot of interactivity, and it's designed based on detailed research um, about what the industry, or what we feel the industry wants, and what the industry has told us. So that's just one, one key point I, I wanted to take the opportunity to make, uh, because we've got the pleasure of um, Simon, one of the co-owners of the Hippodrome, coming at 4.30, so I've got a few minutes to to, to say a few things. Okay, so the most important thing I'm here to say, though, is to say an absolutely gigantic thank you to the sponsors. And it's a cliche, but cliches are cliches because they're cliches and therefore they're real. Um, we could not have done this, with, well, we could have done it without them, but it would have been me in the car park with a megaphone. It would have been crap. So we've had this wonderful day and there's a lot more to come as well because of the people who have been involved in this event and have worked tirelessly and brought so much to it. And I'm going to start with Brand Fuel and Social Fuel because I've known these guys for a long time. I've done quite a bit with, with John and I've just got to say, and, and, and this is a sort of... Um, off the cuff thing. They have been meticulous and brilliant in the speaker program, the content, the way they wanted to present it and produce it, the way they pulled all that important aspect of the event together has been absolutely amazing and a complete pleasure to work with. Totally seamless, totally professional, um, the likes of which is, is very, very rare. So, so a massive thank you to, to Brand Fuel and Social Fuel um, and everyone involved there. Um, I'd also like to thank eTouches. eTouches we actually used, um, I know they spoke about it, but we used eTouches for, um, for the registration and we got really excited about it and started using lots of other features and then we realised yeah, we better not go, go too far here because uh, we just want to do the basics so there's a huge scope there and it was, was very, very interesting to, to try that um, out for the first time really um, RefTech, we've worked with RefTech for a long time very, very simple, fantastic solution and they've got all sorts of technology as well behind the scenes so very, very professional company to work with on the badging side uh, and they can go you know, as high tech or low tech as you like CBA on the internet side, uh, th these guys are amazing. They, they, they completely wire Glastonbury, for example, so everyone has internet connection, uh, and they can do that in any building, whether it's an underground car park, dungeon, cellar, I don't know why I'm talking about weird, um, say, they're masochistic style venues, but anyway, they can make internet connections uh, appear anywhere, so very important. Um, tablet rentals, Jamie and his team have been phenomenal. This is the first time we've done an event where everyone's been given a tablet, uh, and to me, I was you know, a little bit worried that that would be a very, very precarious thing to do. But it, for, as far as I've seen, it's been seamless, it's been brilliant, it's enabled us to do the voting in, in, a, in a fun, clean cut, very simple, informative way. Everyone's enjoyed it. Um, it's a great way to have all the, all the content uh, in one place. So I think it's been an absolute triumph uh, first time, first time round, absolutely brilliant. So thank you so much and make sure, I think with, with all these sponsors, what they're doing as well is showcasing what they can do in a, in a live environment, which is obviously the best way to do things, but also uh, the most dangerous way to do things. And I think because of the hard work of everyone involved, it's come off really, really well. So it's a fantastic company, uh, definitely, definitely one for now and the future. Um, Luma, uh, Tim's amazing interactive devices. I definitely want to go out and get a couple of bags. So I was just inquiring as to whether they'll still be there when we get out of here, but I'm sure uh, I'm sure they definitely will. And Tim's got lots of other products and things that, that I'm sure he'd be delighted to talk to anyone about. Um, Matt Chung. Matt Chung Photography. He's done lots of photography for us over the years. He's always brilliant. His background, I'm sure he won't mind me saying, I don't know if you're up there somewhere, Matt, um, is in, in architectural photography. So he's very, very good at, uh, at um, photographing venues, which is superb. And then you add the reportage and, and um, uh, an event side to it, and it's the perfect mix. So it always, always works. Um, Craig Murdoch, who has been filming and... Um, 
We will have lots and lots of video content. Um, he did an amazing video for us at this event we did in an aircraft hangar at, at uh, Biggin Hill. It was the most stupendous video. Um, and after two days and 2,000 views, and it was all hugely popular, we were asked to take it down. Not because of Craig, but because the owners of the um, aircraft hangar were um, Muslim and didn't like the fact that we had lots of shots of alcohol. So uh, then I got a call saying someone had broken a bloody airplane, so it got worse. But anyway, the event was a great success, and we can now use the video for for other things, so all, all is fine. And last and not, but, but not least, um, I'm sure you've all noticed, and I don't know, I don't think that many of you have been here since it's had its huge um, revamp, but the Hippodrome, um, which is l genuinely one of the most fantastic series of event spaces in London, there's no question. We've done a whole bunch of things here, and we've attended a whole bunch of things here. Um, and it's just been absolutely brilliant. Um, so a massive thank you to the Hippodrome, the most wonderful food, the most wonderful series of, of event spaces, all very different. Um, and for the event later, they've even given me my own backstage dressing room, because I've got a ridiculous outfit to wear. So amazing. So thank you so much, the Hippodrome. So let me just have a, a quick round of applause for all the sponsors who have been super Herb. And then I've just got a few, before, before we cut to a video and to hear from Simon from the Hippodrome and, and, and then go off and do all sorts of fun things, um, the Hippodrome have very kindly um, put together some exclusive and bespoke offers and, and gifts for absolutely everyone here. Uh, and it's a, a mixture and a variety of different things. So Amy and Grace are going to come around and be, be handing out a few things. And we, we've already got little sort of moleskin uh, notebooks and, and various other bits and pieces. Um, but the Hippodrome would like to thank you guys for attending the event here. Um, and they sincerely and we sincerely hope you've enjoyed the experience and that you will be back. Um, as I touched on before, 26 events can take place in this venue simultaneously. So that's not just 26 different spaces. At the same time, there can be 26... I mean, the cloakroom is probably a nightmare if you do that. Well, probably not. You must have a contingency plan for that. But you can have 26 separate events running in this venue at any one time. So for all of those venue spaces, and there will be tours later, and you must, must go and see them. There's roof terraces, there's lion pits. It's not really a lion pit, but I call it that, and they have to sort of justify why I've called it that. Um, but all sorts of... All sorts of interesting spaces. So for anyone here who wants to do an event, big or small, um, there, is, there is free, uh, I don't know if there's a time limit on this, but there's free um, room hire on all spaces in the building. Um, there'll probably be a little bit of cost for, for food and catering, things like that, but, but uh, free venue, venue spaces, which is something they don't usually do. There's also an upgrade on any standard day delegate package to a two-course full buffet lunch as opposed to sandwiches, and those packages start at 35 quid a head, uh, and with the free room hire, that's, that's pretty phenomenal. Um, the matching, matching room, this room that we're in, is, is a cabaret room. And this curtain actually opens up and you look over the atrium of the casino, so it's pretty dramatic when you look at it from the other side as well. Um, but there are lots of cabaret acts and things that go on here. I think um, Je Jeff, who does all the entertainments, even had the stereophonics doing an acoustic set in here, and Paloma Faith just, just rocked up and did one impromptu. So there's loads and loads of cool artists who come here. Um, so for all of us, and I say us because I hope I'm included in this, um, there are uh, complimentary tickets for what's called the Polly Ray Burlesque Show, which sounds pretty good to me, even though I don't know who Polly Ray is. But, so free tickets for all of us. I've, I, I hear it's an absolutely stupendous show, really, really fantastic, world-class. Um, so for anyone here who wants that, I think Amy's handing out some information. You can always talk to Amy or Grace about anything the Hippodrome are doing at any time. Um, anyway, so are we now ready for Simon? Who knows? Well, I've gone over my time limit anyway. So what I think we'll do... Shall we run the, run yeah, the VT of the video? Okay, we're going to show a short video about the history of the Hippodrome, which is completely fascinating. Those of you who are coming to the party tonight, um, it will start to make sense as to um, why we've gone with a little bit of a circus theme. Um, there's some rich heritage and history there. So we will run the video, and then if Simon's here to uh, tell us a bit more from there, might be or might not be, I'm just stalling for time. Uh, okay, if he's not here when the video finishes, I'll come up and do a bit of a stand-up comedy routine for three minutes. Okay. Let's see the history of the Hippodrome. <laughs> 